Welcome to MSPTDA video number 25. Yes, Microsoft Power Tools for Data Analysis. And we need to talk about how to compare budget and actual. And in this video 25, we're going to see how to use an Excel formula to create our solution using SUMIFS and end of month. And then in the next one, 26, we'll see how to do it with DAX and the data model. Now you can download this file in the link below the video. Now for this budget example, the business creates a budgeted number for a particular product for the month. That means we have two attributes, the month and product, and the grain is at the month level. This is our budget number. But over here, we have a transactional table. This is the product and the particular transactional date. So the grain of this is at the transaction level. Over here, it's at the month level. No problem. In our actual sales, we can pull and add using the SUMIFS function based on product, looking through this column, and the date. Now we're given for each row in this table the end of the month. So inside our formula, well, we have the end of the month. That'll be the upper limit. But we'll have to derive inside of our formula the first of the month. That will be the lower limit. Those two conditions will be used on this column. With those three conditions and the SUMIFS function, we can calculate actual sales. Then we can compare budget and actual. Equals SUMIFS. The sum range, I click in the top cell, Control Shift Down L, F4. That locks the range because we're copying it and jumps back to the active cell. Now I'm looking at the screen tip, comma, criteria range one. We have one two, three different ranges we need to put in. The first one we're going to put in is product. Control shift down arrow, F4, comma. Criteria 1, well, that means we have to match up whatever the condition for this row is to find it in this column. That's a relative cell reference. Now I type a comma. Criteria range 2, well, guess what? We have an upper and lower limit we need to compare for each row in this table to pull the right sales and then add. So we are going to have to repeat the date column twice. Control Shift Down Arrow F4. Now comma. The first condition is, hey, dates in that column right there. How many of you are greater than or equal to the lower limit? Now comparative operators and some ifs have to be put in double quotes greater than or equal to two different symbols, and double quote. Then we have to join it to the actual lower limit date. That's the first of the month. Ampersand, Shift 7, that's our join operator. Now, I can't just click there because that's the end of the month. But guess what? I'm going to use the end of the month function to look at that date, comma. And for months, I say minus 1. That means for this row right here, it will see December 31st, 2018. When it gets down to the next row, it'll see January 31st, 2019. Close parentheses. Now, wait a second. We don't want to include the last day from last month, 12, 31, 2018. So I'm getting rid of the equal sign. Now, that's the lower limit. I come to the end comma. I repeat the date column. Watch this. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to come over to criteria range 2. Click Control C to copy. Click on criteria range 3, Control V, comma. Now I see criteria 3. This is the upper limit. So in double quotes, I have to say less than or equal to in double quotes ampersand. And now I simply click as a relative cell reference on end of the month. And that formula will work to go and summarize from our transactional table at the day product grain and summarize it at the correct grain, the month product level. Close parentheses, Control Enter. Now we can double click and send that formula down. Control down arrow to jump to the last cell. And I'm going to hit F2 just to verify that all the cell references are pointing in the correct place. And they are. Escape, Control Home to jump to cell A1. Now we can calculate our variance. Equal sign, left arrow. That's the actual amount of the sales minus left arrow, left arrow, that's how much we budgeted for. In this case, it'll be positive because the sales were greater than the budgeted sales. Control Enter and double click and send it down. Sometimes we're below target. 260,000 is less than 266,000. Sometimes we're above. Now percentage variance equals left arrow, 
that's the amount of the change divided by the actual budgeted amount. Now I control enter, double click, and send it down. If you want to format this as a percent, I'm going to use my drop down and say, hey, percentage with two decimals. And there we have our percent variance actual to budget. We went from a transactional level table or a transactional grain, summarized the values, and compared to our product month level or grain. Now this video, we use some ifs and end of month in an Excel worksheet formula. Next video, we'll see how to bring these tables into the Power Pivot or Power BI data model, build relationships, and the correct measures to compare in a pivot table, budget, and actual. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. All right, we'll see you next video.